，圣诞节的时候有找人吃饭，吃中国饭。哦，这个是这个。You said a salam manishma. In Shanghai, you can see many, many the synagogue. Tradition. Jewish culture, maintain their culture and heritage. Last time we did a Jewish food crawl with Liam in the Lower East Side, we were able to check out a lot of stuff that tourists might visit. This time we're taking it to the next level to check out other Jewish spots you might not have been exposed to, whether they're Orthodox, Hasidic, hipster, and we even hit up a Chinese kosher restaurant where the owner speaks Hebrew. First location on this traditional Jewish food crawl part two. We are in Brooklyn outside of Gottlieb's and we are in the middle of the biggest Hasidic Jewish community in New York City. Yo, Liam, tell us more. One of the most densely populated Hasidic communities, you know, probably anywhere you'll find close to here, around here. You know, the Hasidics are probably the most strict Jews within all of Jewish culture and they're very to themselves, but it's with good reason. Now, throughout history, they have to stay with themselves to maintain their culture and heritage, you know? Right, right, right. Came here to check it out, check out Gottlieb's. Hey, I'm, I'm trying to try some of this food, man, because, you know, this is not a community that, you know, we come to often, so I'm really excited. Gottlieb's. I think it is important to note that he is eating orange chicken. As you guys are going to th see throughout this video, Chinese food is very, very popular amongst the Jewish community, even here at an Orthodox spot. They still have food that looks like chow mein, okay, the fried noodles, they have egg rolls, and they have their kosher orange chicken here. So, really interesting stuff. All right, Liam, we are in Williamsburg right now. We're at Gottlieb's restaurant right across the bridge. What are we looking at? All right, we're looking at some Hungarian, some American, and actually some Chinese food, if you wouldn't be surprised. What's the story behind Gottlieb's restaurant? Gottlieb's has been here for almost 60 years. It was opened by Hungarian, actually, Holocaust survivors that served food in concentration camps. Yo, so when it comes to Jewish food, I'm seeing a lot of dishes that I didn't initially expect, right? I'm seeing like grilled chicken with peppers and onions. You got some form of orange chicken. You got a beef stew. Coming into New York City, you have a lot of diversity in the food. And as long as it's kosher, it's cool. All right. Let's get into it. Grilled, grilled chicken. chicken. Yeah, That was immediately the thing that caught my eye. Grilled chicken. Mm. Homemade tasting. So that's kind of how you'd expect a pepper and onion grilled chicken to taste. It's hard to identify exactly like what those spices are based off of, but it does taste like something you would get at the mall or uh, some to-go spot. Right, this is warm krugel, it can be served cold and warm. You can see the cold right here. You know, it can be you know, sweet or it can be savory. It's These are these potatoes, right? Yeah, potatoes. Yo, I never had this before, this is pretty good. It's made out of pasta. If you can imagine a sweet onion pasta, this is kind of what it tastes like. I've never had it in this form though. Tell me what's your personal story about this one? Because you were saying we have to get the apple crew. Oh yeah, 100%. You know, this is a Jewish staple that my grandmother used to make you know, back in the day. And you know, it's just something that's eaten at all types of Jewish holidays. You know, it's pretty, you know, exclusive. Oh, no, that's good. It's almost like a bread pudding, yeah. but less decadent, but in a good way. It's actually easier to eat than a bread pudding. It's not as sweet, but I'm actually enjoying this a lot, man. I could see why you said we had to get the apple crew one. Liam, what do we yeah, have? So this is just a beef stew. It's a, like, you know, Eastern Europe, Ukraine, Poland. Mm -hmm. Hey, Dinty Moore, you ain't got nothing on Gottlieb's. <laughs> this is like your quintessential beef and potato stew. Hits you where you need, it's beefy. Beef is falling apart, it's juicy. Yeah, it's like a soul food almost. Mm -hmm. You know, it's definitely something you'd see eating, you know, 50, 60 years ago. Oh man, if I would like it a lot. All right, so moving on to our last two dishes here. We got Chinese dishes, and this is one of the themes of this video, as you're gonna see, is the relationship between the Jewish community and the Chinese community. So what do we got? Maybe it seems like an egg roll right here, and you got some sesame chicken, you know, definitely Chinese specialties, but you see it at a Hasidic Ooh, Jewish okay. spot. And it really highlights the relationship, you know, between Jews and Chinese people. For Chinese and Jews to kind of have this like, you know, a pretty chill relationship with each other is pretty interesting. Yeah, it originates from this you know, Lower East Side community and just living in such clo close proximity. All right, man, go for it. Let's try the Chinese food here at Gottlieb's, bro. This is Chinese food at a Jewish deli. And I'm going in on the sesame chicken, man. Sesame chicken. All right, this is the veggie egg roll. Yeah, that one's good. I would say this is actually one of the better ones I've had of this version. One of the best ones. 
art, you guys, we had to get the gefilte fish. It's a combination of, of just a specific fish, and you know, it's not crazy in the way it is. It's poached. Oh, so a it's bit. a fish patty. Yeah, almost. Yeah. I mean, it's a Jewish staple. It's you know, it's exclusive to Ashkenazi Jews. And so let's have the gefilte fish with the beets, the cucumbers, and the pickles. Let's do it. Gefilte fish. Ooh. It's like a old sweet shrimp patty. Very interesting. I'm gonna get the cucumber, the beets, the gefilte fish, and the pickle on one bite. Mmm. Bouncing okay, everything else. Yeah. I think Gottlieb's is clearly always adapting and updating their food and recipes, and I think that's really cool. Yo, let's try this. What are we looking at, Liam? We got a pastrami knish. You know, we've had we've had knishes before. We had a pastrami sandwich, but it's really interesting to see the two come together. Okay, but this is fried too, which yeah. is different from pastrami, pastrami knish. Tastes like a pastrami potato croquette. I'm feeling these beets heavy. Wow. I like the cucumbers, man. I, I like the yeah. cucumbers with that. I got homie taste for it, yeah. Taking the pastrami knish, I'm gonna dip it into this beef stew. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, adds a little sauce to it. All right, you guys, we're nearing our end of the meal here at Gottlieb's restaurant. Originally, I was gonna say my favorite was the grilled chicken with the onions and the peppers, but actually, I'm gonna have to just pull a little audible. I'm gonna say the gefilte fish, but you got to get it with these beets that are almost like some wasabi beets with some dill and the cucumbers. It actually kind of reminds me of pretty much like Asian food. Liam, what was your favorite? You know, the thing that I have the most memories with and I connect with the most, something my grandmother used to make is the apple approval. And it's, again, it's something that you look at and you're like, mm, I don't know about that, but like once you get into it, delicious. Yeah, it was good, it was good. It was like a healthier bread pudding. My favorite was the thing I never had had before. It looked completely new to me. It was the warm onion krugel. All right, this is like brown sauteed caramelized onions with these square pasta pieces. Like, I'm not gonna lie, it was good. All right, you guys, that was really dope, man. This is just our first spot in the Hasidic community because we are headed to a kosher supermarket. Yo, 100%, you know, it's just around the corner. You know, it's something that I think everyone in the community is going to. It's kosher, you know, it maintains what the lifestyle is needed and it's cheap too, so we'll see you there. I always feel like uh, like Chinese people and Jewish people, even like hundreds of years back, they had like a pretty decent relationship. You even look at you know the Holocaust and look at how much China supported the Jews, even when America wasn't even taking them in, you know? Right, right, right. No, there's a story about that, Andrew, and that is actually why John Stewart, the comedian, his grandfather was born in China. Chinese is such a humongous group that kind of went across the world in a huge diaspora and for different reasons, so did Jewish people. I mean, that's why there's Jewish people from so many different countries. That's a lot of the branding in here isn't what you'd see in a normal like grocery store. We've got a couple of brands here, you know, these are Certified kosher and have to be slaughtered or something like that. Aren't you guys we're in the Jewish deli right now? Of course, all kosher. I'm gonna get in the smoked brisket. Yeah, can I get a little bit of all that? The beans, the potato cake, and the meat, meat and potato cake. Is that kugel? Yeah, they call it kugel. Yeah, can I get one of the kugels too? Yeah. Yo, Liam's gonna be going crazy when I get another kugel. All right, young Liam. Broski, I got something for you, bro. From a different recipe, a hot kugel. Wow. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> so those are the little pastas that are stacked on right, top of yeah. each other. So that, and you had some questions. Sweet. Go yeah. for it. Go yeah. for it, bro. See, I didn't know. I See, just copped it from the meat market, the kosher wow. meat market. I was excited Yo, to try it's this too. Steaming. I'm trying Look to get that. into that. Now I might just have to eat it with my hand. Wow, it's very jiggly. Yeah. Mm. This, is more, this is more like my grandma would make. It looks a little bit more traditional. Yo, that's not bad. That's pretty good. Yo, I like you guys gotta try this. This is a uh, potato. This looks like it's almost like a smoked potato mash. Yeah. Have you had this before? No, oh, never. It's really good. It has that smokiness to it, you know? Yeah. Don't mind right. trying that. I'm interested. Oh, but check this out, guys. I secured the kosher smoked brisket as well as stewed brisket. Kosher, kosher brisket. brisket. Man, it's falling apart. This is good. I can tell. Mmm, right, bro. Yo. Listen. Whoa, whoa. Sometimes with that kosher food, because you have to follow such strict kind of guidelines on how you prepare it, 
Sometimes I feel like they put more care into the cooking too, because this is hella good. Some of the best brisket Yo, I had. That is some of the best smoked brisket ever. That is a banger. Wow. Five out of five. Wow. It's crazy. Shout out to Satmar Meats. Satmar Meats. Wow, we're saving this. Dan, behind the camera, you're definitely trying that. All right, so this is the uh, potato thing that we had, but with meat. I think with brisket chopped into it. And then uh, over here, we've got, uh, why don't you try that? That is baked beans and brisket. Wow. Kosher barbecue. barbecue. Old school vibe. All right. Old school vibe. That potato and beef one, it actually tastes kind of good, but it feels weird because it's all mashed up. Let's Yo, try this. can I get the classic phrase from Jewish food crawl number one? Ah, it's tradition. It's tradition. It's tradition. 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 Yo, the smoked brisket was crazy. Wow. I gotta say, do it. Listen, straight up. Satmar Meats Kosher Meat Market in Williamsburg. Best brisket I ever had in my life. This is a platinum triple chocolate. Real kosher. All right, you guys. I, I've selected my item. All right. I'm gonna get the uh, kosher high chews. Oh, these Doritos. They got kosher high chews? All right, not, not really high chews. Kosher, kosher snacks. There is an expense that comes with staying and maintaining a kosher lifestyle. Yo, I gotta say, kosher products are not cheap, but you can taste the quality. The quality is there, absolutely. Higher than non-kosher. When we're talking about soda or candy, why there is even a kosher version? I mean, there is like certain things with gelatin and like, cause you know, gelatin is made with bones of some animal. Right. This is good. I like this. Lieberman's, I'm messing with this chocolate rice cake. I prefer the kosher treats to straight up American treats. I would prefer the kosher ones. Wow. Okay. Right now in this community, do you see any parallels with Chinatown in the sense that maybe people seem a little bit more within themselves? Oh, whereas yeah. they're less um, outwardly emotional, right? 100%. You know, it's very to the community, to themselves. And you even look around and you see, you know, billboards and, and storefronts in, you know, Hebrew. And that's a lot like Chinatown, that they go to their places because they know their places and they know what they're getting and, you know, they know the people around them. You have to be very accepting to who they are and they will be accepting to you. You know, this, this community has a lot of, you know, a lot of flag for being not the most exposed and not the most you know welcoming but once you get to know them once you have a better personality with the community and better understanding of the community they'll you'll fit in just fine no matter who you are i could see that making a lot of sense why I come into this community and try to tell them how to be because we're here and they're not trying to tell us how to be exactly how come for this is the first time that i've ever seen or heard about kosher burgers and kosher steaks I mean, it's a rarity because, you know, according to Jewish and kosher law, you can't have cheese and meat together. And it's, cut, it's this whole idea of not having the animal and its product. Like, you can't have chicken and egg. You can't have the cow and the milk and the cow and the cheese. And it's crazy to see a burger like that, especially with, like, lamb, bacon, baked cheese and a burger. It's just it's crazy to think of. If you're a Jewish person and you're just going to break kosher law for that meal, you're just going to go to whatever burger spot anyways instead of trying to find this compromise that's like a kosher burger and like it's this is a classic in america and just having that experience is great gottlieb's and, and the people in brooklyn that we were just around how are they different like those are two different sects of yeah, jewish people it's, right it's ashkenazi and Mizar, and it's two different cuisines they will be surprised they're not really you know accustomed to some of the stuff that is made here ashkenazi or people from eastern europe hold to their culture a little bit more and they try to you know, not change things because it's worked for so long and it's been such a classic in their heritage. And it's, you know, it's by kosher law. Yo, what if we brought this food over to Brooklyn, man? What do you think they would say? I mean, they might be skeptical, but if it's by kosher law, I mean, I'm sure they'll go for it. Now it falls within kosher law, man. It looks delicious. Fried onions, you have your slaw, you actually have lamb, bacon, and then you actually get pulled barbecued pastrami, and then you have your beef patty right here that's made out of ribeye, and then you have your vegetables and you have a nice little yellow soft brioche bun. Oh, sure, smoke a burger. Ooh, man. Talk about flavor. A lot of flavor in this yeah. baby right here. It's crazy how it's a burger spot in Manhattan and it's kosher and Jewish people can eat here, but it tastes like Texas. It's crazy to think like something kosher, something that is by Jewish law, is tasting like something from Texas. Tell us what made this steak kosher. The cow has to be dead when you slaughter it. Kosher ribeye. Right. Liam, have you ever had a kosher steak before in your life? Never. You know, it's not something I'd ever really think of even comes to my head, you know? So it's not even something that people have tried before that you know of? You can go to the store and get it, but like, that's crazy to think, just walk into an establishment and take out some steak. Maybe everybody did, 
eat low key the kosher steaks, but they never thought about selling them. From now on, if it ain't a kosher steak, I don't want it. Bring it back. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. All right, so to wrap it up here at Mocha Burger, what are some thoughts that come to mind, Liam? You're looking at this food as like a new era to being kosher. Like, right. this is not something you'd see like 20 years ago, and it's crazy right. to just have this and be able to consume it with kosher lava. Yo, it's like a new style, and it's really, really good for a person who was never exposed to it. The market is here. You can have like a kosher version of a lot of things. We're gonna check all of them out. We're gonna see what they have to provide, you know? All right, Liam, on the menu, you gotta tell us which dishes you think will be the most popular. They usually just get some of the staples of like, you know, what you do them like duck, like, you know, chicken. It caters to four different groups. Buddhists, mm -hmm. Jewish people, even Orthodox, Muslims, and it even caters to vegans. Hey, these are all people make who feel, feel very passionately about their diets. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, okay, we're gonna get the vegan soup dumplings. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. oh, he showed it. He flashed it. He said, hey, he just gave a peek. A little peek. He said, hey, we got more in the back. Wait, guys, you didn't actually win with the Italians even. Uh, that's a good point. All right, we're talking about a vegan Chinese spot. I do not know if that many Italians come here. I might be the only one. All right, Liam, you do have something to uh, tell all the Mandarin speakers out there. Oh! On Christmas, Jewish people like to eat Chinese food. All right. Oh, yeah. Well, that's why we're, you know, it's not Christmas, but we're eating Chinese food. Marco, did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. did not know that. Jews live in tenements in this neighborhood, which is right next to Chinatown. And on Christmas, Jews are like, where are we going to go? Like, where are we? There's nowhere open. So right, back in the day, exactly everything day. closed on Christmas, yeah, exactly, except yeah. Chinatown. Exactly. Right, so, so it's, a, it's an American collaboration. Even in Seattle, I knew that Jewish people went to go eat Chinese food on Christmas, but I didn't know most Jewish people in America that are like fifth gen like you yeah. can trace their roots back to New York, right? 100%. New York was the place for Jewish people and has the most Jewish people in America, so I wouldn't be surprised at all. This is a vegan Shaolong Bao, guys, a vegan soup dumpling. You miss the pork gelatin yeah. fat, yeah, obviously. It does have some of the vibe, though. Absolutely. And this is kosher. Everything here is not only vegan, but it's kosher. Was that like soy sauce in there? It was really like, um, it was good. That was vinegar. Well, you gotta go in, go in on the uh, general, the vegan general souls. It's kosher. Oh, I got Marco it. Marco got you beat on the, on the chopsticks, though. Better with the chopsticks. Good. Mm. It ain't bad. It ain't bad. She said when the Orthodox Jews come, that's the number one dish they get. They clearly focus on that item. Oh, my goodness. Yo, Gerald, grab one. That's crazy how much it looks like meat, vegan chashu Oh. Oh, wow. That's good. Whoa. That bao is so fresh, super fluffy. Oh. The bread is actually better yeah. than a lot of spots. Yeah. The bread is one of the best chashu bao breads I've actually had in New York Chinatown. It was like Krispy Kreme. That's crazy. Oh. <laughs> no, that's good. Marco, I want right. you to be the judge. I know you are a roast meats guy. Kosher chashu. Yo, oh man, that's pretty good. This is real solid, guys. It has the same taste. The texture is a little off, obviously, but it's really, really good, though. Oh my god, I'm hopping on the vegan train wagon. I'm hopping on it. Oh, that's good. Train wagon. Yeah, is that even a thing? <laughs> that you made of a bandwagon. I, yeah, I don't even to say the train wagon. Yo, let me try these uh, spring rolls, man. Yo, dip it in the sauce. Let's go. You know, I felt like Jewish parents and Chinese parents are kind of similar in the way, like they don't care if their kids are like kind of nerdy or more like, I guess, introverted, as long as they're like doing good in school. I mean, they're all about like what's coming next. I think it's both groups do not focus on partying in the conventional way. They want success for their kids, they want the best mm. for their kids. Chinese people and Jewish people, they do have some similarities, but one's the biggest group on earth and one's like the smallest group on earth. Let's try these shrimp bowls, guys. So I've never had vegan shrimp. Yo, it's pretty fire. I don't know if it tastes like shrimp and it doesn't look like shrimp, but it tastes good. Mm, I'm a fan of this, man. Me too. So it looks more like chicken, but it tastes just like shrimp. I'm, I'm going yeah. with the, the vegan Buddhist kosher halal shrimp. I don't see the yarmulke. <laughs> the new, new, new yarmulke. There's, 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 there's different levels. There's different levels. Okay, so how was your Passover? I celebrate with my family over Zoom. <laughs> a, little, a little unconventional, but it was, it was fun. Did you learn to speak any uh, Yiddish or Hebrew since you have so many customers? Because you will have a rabbi. We have rabbi, we have mashkiach. Mashkiach is the person who checks the food. This is the kosher certificate. Did you say something in Hebrew to him when you walked up to the table? Yeah, I said, Salam Manishma. 
<laughs> the answer is Pearl Hassan. Yeah, that's a thank God. Hey, yo, he speaks some Mandarin though. Yeah, this Jewish. I don't know what you're saying. Yeah. Very <laughs> good. I'm from Beijing. Yeah. You can, have a conversation. can you tell us the history? Because uh, during World War II, there was a lot of Yotai then that moved to China, right? A thousand years ago. A thousand years ago. Henan province still have the synagogue there. Chinese government accept that the, the refugees which are from America. America at that time they refused. They went to China, Shanghai. In Shanghai you can see many, many the synagogue. Still there from still there, still there. Okay. What's like your favorite dish that you had here? Oh, I have to say I no, I like the egg roll, honestly. The egg roll was solid. Crazy. I'm actually going with the shrimp. I, I, I gotta have another one right wow. now. This is good. <laughs> shrimp a little chili oil, a little wow, sweet and sour. Wow, get it in. Crazy. Marco, what was your favorite? Definitely the roast pork. I mean, there wasn't much of a difference from the roast pork that I get in, you know, across the street that's not kosher and not uh, veg vegetarian. This was amazing. I gotta go with the chashu bao. That bread was so fluffy. A lot. I would eat that bread alone. Hey, shout out to the owner for shedding some light. The very long relationship between Jewish people and Chinese people, especially in China. We're venturing out there. We're going deep. On this Jewish food crawl through New York part two, B&H Dairy, it's been almost open for a hundred years and it's located in the East Village. 1938, this place has been serving Ashkenazi, Jewish, Eastern European food. It is kosher. It's in the Yiddish Broadway. It used to be called the Yiddish Broadway. There's tenements all over with Jewish guys that's growing up, you know? When you said that it serves more of like the Ashkenazi, like Jewish American type food, it makes sense because East Village traditionally has a lot of like Europeans and Eastern Europeans. Are we in the Ukrainian village? I uh, guess so, yeah, we are in the Ukrainian village. All right, And uh, I think you have ancestors from Ukraine? Uh, or Poland? Poland. Okay, we're getting into some history here. b and Dairy. Dairy. You have it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, what else need? Uh, get the boots. Oh, cheese, yeah, yeah. We want The cheese one is more traditional, right? Okay, get the cheese one. Two sauerkraut and two potato. Okay, fried? Which one's better? Fried, let's do a fried. The fried spinach pierogies are amazing. Yeah, pierogies. Okay. Matzo ball soup. Matzo ball, let's get up one matzo ball. You're a Jewish background, okay? Yes, I am. All right, <laughs> you heard it from the source. You can trust me, it's okay, I tell you. Richard? Yes. Richard, you are Jewish, you're from New York City? Yes. How long have you been eating here for? About 76, 1975, 76. It's inexpensive, it's, it's good food. Do you think the younger generation should come here more? I think they do come here. All right, you guys, the spread is arriving here at B&H Dairy. And I got to say, we are joined by Italian Marco. Yo, what's going on, everybody? Yo, I just want to say one thing. We're making history today. We got a Chinese guy, a Jewish guy, an Italian guy. This is what the community should have looked like. Liam, what are we looking at? We got an amazing spread here. We got some blitz, we got pierogi, we got halabra, we have knishes, we have matzo ball, borscht, tuna melt, and latkes. Wow. Yo! This looks like the elevated version. This, there's a lot going on in that dish right now. As an Italian, you're not very familiar with kosher food, right? No, I'm not. To be honest, the only thing that I know on this table is a pierogi, matzo ball, and olive bread. Liam, you were saying earlier, this is Jewish food, but it's not, you could just call it Eastern European food as well, Yeah, right? it should. It just comes from Poland, Ukraine, Russia, just that whole little area. But it's safe to say that your great-grandfather ate these foods. Oh yeah, 100%, 100%. All right, you guys, we're all starting with the challah bread. All right, real quick, challah bread. I know challah bread is being used a lot. Very light. I like it better. It's better than regular bread. The challah bread, now what? I go for the lockers, man. Okay, this is tradition. Lockers. This is slamming right now. I like this because it, it was way healthier tasting than a hash brown. It's probably not just potato that's in there, but... Yo, look. you know I'm looking at it. look like pot stickers. We have a mushroom sauerkraut one, and then we're going to have the potato ones. There we go. Pierogies. Sauerkraut mushroom one. Mm. Potatoes, I'd say, is probably the most, you know, to the point one, to, to the culture. We are on to our gravy sauce dishes here at B&H. We got knish, we got some stuffed cabbage, both Polish and Ukrainian classics. Okay, okay. gravy knish. It's almost like a uh, mashed potato ball mm. because it has that wrapping on it. So do you guys call this sauce or gravy? It's gravy. It's, see, this is gravy, not sauce. Yeah. Stuffed cabbage is one of, actually, a dish that I've had before I really like, so I'm about to go in on this one. Stuffed, stuffed cabbage. cabbage. That was all veggie. It was very herbaceous. All the parsley and all the other herbs are coming through real strong. This tuna sandwich actually looks fire. Tuna, tuna melt. melt on challah bread. 
That challah bread is like nice and toasted with a little butter. This was like the best thing in 1938. That was really this good. Is a top three tuna melt that I've ever had in my life. All right, you guys, we are down to our last three items here at B&H. So we got borscht right here, we got matzo ball soup, we got biscuits. This is kind of like a crepe almost. It's usually more sweet, you know, you can have that savory taste if you want. Yo, maybe, is that why Jewish people like egg rolls in Chinese food? Because this just kind of looks like a big egg roll. I thought it was a cannoli at first. Everybody's just referencing what they know from their culture. <laughs> Cheese blitz. Damn, is this more like a breakfast uh, food? Oh, a little okay. after, after, after dinner or Yo. even during dinner, you know? This is really delightful. Actually. Yo, that cheese is sweet. I didn't expect that. So it was like a crepe. They yeah. rolled it up and then fried it. This might have been the sleeper. That's really yeah, good. Really the blintz was a sleeper. Yo, the texture and the crispiness of this blintz, top notch, man. With kosher foods, like, you get something that is so specific that it's almost hard to find. That's why places like these are so special because back then, they need something cheap and they need something that would follow their religion. So they all came in. Lots of ball soup. All right. That has a lot of dill and it tastes super natural. It's not as salty, it's not as, it's not yeah, something that is, yeah, I'm not gonna feel yeah, later. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. That is pretty good, not bad. Go for it, Liam, you gotta try this, man. I'm assuming this recipe is unchanged for hundreds of years. 100% man, it's borscht. My great, great, great grandfather's probably eating this back in Poland. I gotta say something, this borscht is very red versus I've seen borscht that are a little bit more purple. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm just gonna dip my challah bread in it. There I go. Might be a little intimidating, but you know, it's delicious. I finish this off with an egg cream. You know what my takeaway from a B and H dairy is? Is that it's actually really healthy. The food was high quality, and you don't stick around since 1938 being successful without a quality product. Like it's adapted over the years, and it's just it's a testament to the neighborhood. You know. I would definitely give this a five out of five to tuna melt. I'm definitely coming back probably tomorrow while I'm working. Now our next spot is called. Orchard Grocer. It's here on Orchard Street over in the Lower East Side. It's started by two Jewish sisters that are vegan and they serve some kosher items, but it's not all kosher. It's definitely nice to see like a newer place representing like a more older culture, you know, but it's enlightening, you know. I'm definitely gonna probably come in here once or twice. It's pretty dope to see a modern uh, kosher spot open up and uh, the soft serve, I I'm ready to try it. Let's go in. This is not a Jewish grocery store, but they have some Jewish items, so let's find them. Tell us about this. Matzo ball soup in a box, you know? <laughs> so this is this is how you make matzo ball soup? Is I this... mean, if you want it quick at home, I guess so, yeah. Straight to the point. So this is the inbox, right? Yeah, that makes box. sense. Okay. Liam, I'm not saying that this is a Jewish item, but it is a pigless pork rind. Might have to get these. Hella hot. Let's go. So Liam, what, what do we got over here? Yo, we got matzo. This is probably, if not, the most famous Jewish cuisine in America, across the world. It's eaten on every holiday. I eat this on Hanukkah, I eat this on Purim. Jewish people love appetizers. We'll put a little bit of fish on it, a little bit of anything, but really, okay, okay. I like it plain, honestly. I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty plain person. I'm not gonna lie, my mother actually does eat those. Yes. And But she puts butter and jelly on hers. Oh, I, don't know if, I don't know if it's kosher though. All right, you guys, these are the sandwiches from Orchard Grocery. They're all vegan, there's no meat, although that looks very realistic. There's no salmon in there and it's, you know, it's. They, they're from Jewish sisters and this, you know, deli, deli food, it's something, you know, that's within the history of Jewish culture. You know? I definitely think like the kosher thing, it kind of goes along with the vegan trend. Yeah. They coincide with each other. What kind of tree is this fake salmon off of? Like, is this carrots? I think it's just tomato, bro. Oh, wow. Dude. It's tomato that looks like salmon locks. This is a vegan salmon locks bagel, vegan and kosher. It's almost like the mixture of an old trend and a new trend. So we got the tuna fish made out of chickpea. This is the healthiest thing I've ever ate in years. I'm just <laughs> saying, it's for, oh my God. What kind of bread is this? Do you guys know? Uh, it's uh, rye, I think it's, it's rye. rye bread. The Reuben so. here is interesting because this is supposed to imitate corned beef here. It's super bright. Let's go, this is the Reuben, vegan. They did an incredible job visually imitating the meat. Hold on, man. I gotta eat this salmon lox by itself. Yeah, it's kind of salty like salmon lox too. What the hell? This Reuben kind of tastes like meat. I think this cream cheese is made out of coconut milk instead of regular milk. Oh, That's why okay, you taste okay. the coconutness. All right, we're gonna try these vegan pork rinds. Yes. Does it have had the barbecue Fritos? Yeah. Just like that. Wow. Yo, this vegan? It does taste like me a little bit. What did you guys think was the most impressive? Straight up flavor wise, I have never had 
a vegan rumen. I did not know they were gonna do vegan pastrami that tasted that much like it. I was very impressed because pastrami has like that very like true meaty flavor. It's very salty. And usually you get a lot of pastrami when you eat a sandwich, but man, that being vegan is mind blowing. Now you guys got a modernized grocery. Chinese are the only ones that don't have a modern grocery. A modern hipster one, we don't. I'm not gonna yet, make a yet. prediction. By the end of this year, you will have one. All right, you guys, that does it for our Jewish food crawl part two. We did a lot of dope stuff. We saw some old stuff, some new stuff. We talked about the relationship between Chinese people and Jewish people. We talked about the different types of Jewish people. It just shows you know, the evolution in kosher cuisine and kosher foods and Jewish food. And we see how something from 60 years ago can transition into the mocha burger, which is serving you know, American style food. People should you know, come out of their comfort zone, go to a Jewish spot, see that type of food and really you know, indulge. Maybe I think down the line, I'm gonna end up eating more kosher food because just because there's gonna be more good kosher restaurants that I wanna go to. Shout out to Marco Lombardi for being in the video. Like we said, you know, Jewish, Chinese, Italian, we've been living in the Lower East Side together for a hundred years. We all get to see all the cuisines uh, progress and it's cool to see all of us hang out in one video. And until next time, we're out. Peace. Checking out new neighborhoods, interacting and experiencing different cultures, just being outside of your comfort zone is probably one of the best ways to try and understand people. And I think the more you see, the more you realize that we're more similar than different. And little things like understanding each other ultimately can go a long way. There were some comments about the last video that was like, oh, maybe he didn't really talk about the different levels right, of yeah. kosher because there's kosher like level one and then I feel like there's 10. What do you All think? Right, so like kosher, you know, it has a line that you can cross or don't cross. You know, I am what you call a humanistic Jew. So there's levels of Judaism. So I don't practice Judaism. I don't have that belief system, but I respect my culture and I, like, I'm indulged with its heritage. Mm. So when you talk to someone that may be kosher in the sense that they want to celebrate their history, they might not, they might be kosher on the holiday, they might be kosher, like, situationally, but maybe not their entire life is kosher because it's expensive to keep up. It's just a lot to get done. It's but kind if, of inconvenient. Exactly. But if you have like Hasidic or Orthodox Jews, 100% kosher. Everything they buy is kosher. And that's right. why they're in these communities that you know are all around buying locally because these local places are all kosher.